Hello, my name is Randall Root, and in this video we are going to talk about foreign keys. I have three demonstrations that uh, I'm going to show you. First uh, demonstration is asking or answering the question, what is a foreign key? The next one is, what is a foreign key constraint? And the last one is, how does identity affect foreign keys? So let's take a look at that. First thing I want to do is I'm going to focus on the tempdb. Uh, double check that these tables are missing so I can make them again. Nothing special about these tables. There's category with category ID and name. Uh, I have marked the column as being unique for category name and the category ID as a primary key column. This creates a primary key constraint. This creates a unique constraint. I did pretty much the same thing here on the products table. Uh, although I didn't make a unique name on the products table. Uh, I did put a primary key on there, and it's three columns, product ID, product name, and category ID. And as you might suspect, the category ID is to, used to link products to the categories table. The categories table has a category ID. The products table has a category ID. The category ID in the categories table is the primary key column. The category ID in the products table is a foreign key column. A foreign key is a column whose values are <coughs> reliant on uh, values from another column. So that's that's what we have going on here. So I make up these two tables and I insert some values into the category table. So let's start with one row. So I've got a category called category A and its category ID is 1. When I go to put data in the products table, I need to make sure that I put a value in there that makes sense. The category ID table currently has one row whose category ID is one. So when I try to put the data into the products table, I need to make sure that I use a number that exists. When I do, I can easily see that product A is in the category of category A. And that is the purpose of this, to add a reference between the two tables, more specifically between the two columns. Typically your foreign keys are between two columns and different tables, although occasionally there'll be two columns in the same table. It's almost always two columns in a different table. So that's a foreign key. And the way it should work is you should have a value that matches in each of these columns. Now, if I try to put a value in there that doesn't match, it may work, as in this code, it does work, but it doesn't make sense. So the product B is in what category? Well, there is no category 2, so we don't know. It'd be better off to put in a null value indicating that we don't know, it's unknown. But putting in a number like 2 when there is no category ID of 2 in the categories table is incorrect. That's just wrong. So we have a foreign key. We just don't have any enforcement other than telling people don't do that. So a foreign key is a column that <clears throat> whose values come from a, a column, a, a different column. Foreign key is a column whose values come from a different column, typically in another table. And it's up to you to make sure that you put in numbers that make sense. Now, if you want to enforce that, you can go ahead and create a foreign key constraint. So here's the same tables as before. But I'm adding on a foreign key constraint. So I'm altering the products table, and I'm adding a constraint, a foreign key constraint, to the category D column that references the category D column in the categories table. This is how you make a foreign key constraint. Now, when I insert data into the tables, so I just dropped these tables. Let me uh, give me a minute. I gotta. I've got to actually insert at least a row into categories. Let's go back here and do that. Bring it down here to my demo. 
Okay, so. Oops. Put it in the wrong spot. There we go. So we've made the categories and products table. We've added a constraint on there. And now I'm going to insert data into the categories table. And we've got category A. And now I'm going to insert data into the products table. We have product A with a category ID of one. And that, that's exactly what it should be. It should, it should match up. And if we look at both these tables, it does. But if I try to put in a category that doesn't exist, like I did last time, I'm going to get an error message because it violates the foreign key constraint. There's a conflict that has occurred because of this. And of course, the reason why it's occurring is because there is no category two. So trying to put this data in there incorrectly causes an error message. So foreign key constraints are pretty handy for that. They, um, they stop you from doing things that you shouldn't be doing. The other thing it will stop you from doing is deleting data that would break the reference between the two tables. So right now, right now I've got the category ID and the categories table being referenced by the category ID in the products table. I'm going to try to delete from the categories table the category ID of one. Now, I should not be able to do that because if I do, then this number will have no reference. There will be nothing to reference in the categories table. And because I have a foreign key constraint, it'll stop me from doing that. So the foreign key constraint does two things. It stops you from putting in data that won't, uh, isn't referenceable. It, you can't reference it in the categories table because it doesn't exist. And it keeps you from re removing data that would break a reference. So that's what a foreign key constraint does. The, uh, the third demo has to do with the way the identity clause, or I should say specification, changes the behavior. I'll drop tables again, and we'll make them again. But this time, I've added in the auto number uh, feature, which is the identity specification in Microsoft SQL Server. So this makes it an auto numbered column. It'll automatically add an ID in there. Now, officially, it doesn't really have any direct impact on the way a foreign key works, but it does have kind of an indirect impact on it. And that's what I'm here to show you. So you can see that I've got the identity clause in both tables, um, specification. And I've also got the for, a foreign key constraint defined on the category D in the products table. Now I did this right when I defined the table, which is another way to do it. You can either define the table first and then add the constraint, or you can add the constraint at the time you define the table. I've just chose to do it this way this time. Just to show you it could be done. So let's get started with trying to insert data into the categories table. And you can see I get an error message. It says that I cannot put an explicit value for an identity column. This is the identity column in the categories table. And I can't put a number in there explicitly because it's implied implicitly by the identity clause. So there is implicated is implicit that it loads up with a number all by itself. So in order to be able to insert data, you have to not try to insert a data in manually. Just let it do the do the inserting automatically. And you can see that I come up with uh, I come up with the same result, I just had to skip over the category D and let it automatically add the number for me. Now, if I um, try to insert the same data again in the categories table, I do have a unique constraint on the category name column. 
So doing so should cause an error message. It, it did, it violated the unique constraint. But oddly enough, if I go ahead and put in a value after that by fixing it, the name's now unique, notice that it skipped over the number two. And that's because it started to give the next row a number, realized that there was a mistake, undid the, uh, just stopped running it, and the number two was already used. So the next time we try to automatically insert an ID in there, it goes to that next number. And <clears throat> this, uh, this has a tendency to confuse people. The, the identity clause itself, again, is not directly associated with the, the foreign key other than this feature here where you may think that the numbers are in a sequence uh, when they're not. Something has occurred and they're out of sequence. And what I see people try to do is they'll try to insert data into like the products table and that, this works. And then they'll try to insert the second row in there thinking that this one must be there because um, that would be the, the next category. Uh, but the problem is it's not there. There is no two in that table. There's only a three. So this one works, but this one doesn't. And again, that's because the identity clause, when an error occurred, it skipped over a number. So I see people struggle with that on a pretty regular basis. Once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad. Um, the way that you can fix it is to go through and um, just rebuild the tables if you're using a small thing, a small thing like this where I can just go through and clean it all up and reinsert the data. There is a way to, to turn off the identity insert feature. When it's turned off, you can make manual adjustments. Um, but to tell you the truth, this is one of the problems with the identity clause. It, it can be cumbersome to work with unless you are doing something relatively simple. So something to be mindful about. Anyway, that's a demo on some basic things you should know about foreign keys. And I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.